and uh okay okay we just enable the so we just enable the and um yeah so i'm noel and with me is my uh co-host also i guess like chuni chuni also will be helping with the workshop so if you have any questions along the way you can ask um and for those who just joined uh make sure that you have like a terminal ready so for windows maybe it's wsl for mac or uh, linux just a yeah terminal will do and uh also like an editor so that you can like edit the script files uh that we'll cover later, later on during the workshop yeah and if you want to follow along also you can use this link here uh thank you you can help me to send it in the chat as well so that people want to follow along yeah and yeah so let's started oh yeah also some uh, credit goes to julius julius has actually helped to develop this workshop uh he's one of our uh, hackers alumni so he actually uh helped to develop this like set of materials yeah okay so um there's a few parts that we'll go through like first i'll just give you a brief in introduction about like uh hackers and then like also like what i'm going to cover and then like we have some exercises on scripting and yeah, just give like a uh, conclusion on like certain things you can explore after after this workshop. Okay, so a bit on NUS Hackers for those who are new to our events. So we actually run four events. Uh, Hacker School, Friday Hacks, Hack and Roll and Hacker Tools. So for Hacker School, is actually like an event that we hold on the weekends, I think Saturday. And so that's actually tailored a lot to like beginners. We run like uh, workshops on building simple things, telegram bots, websites, that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah. And then we have Friday Hacks where we run it every Friday evening. Uh, there you get like free pizza and you also get to hear like interesting technical talks. So you can also consider coming for that. Hacker Tools, sorry, Hack and Roll is run uh, once a year. So that's around January or February. I think January, yeah. January and uh, it's like a hackathon where you can just like hack and do anything you want. So it's uh, quite fun like there's a lot of prizes there's also like pinch events uh yeah so look out for that like sometime around january and then for hacker tools this is like uh, the current series that uh, me and chuni are running so this uh we will have uh one more workshop uh so there's data wrangling next week and then we'll take a break for recess week uh, midterms and whatever and we'll resume after that yeah and so during Hacker Tools, we actually cover like uh, developer tooling, um, like things like command line, uh, scripting, that kind of thing. And it's, it actually closely follows, I think, MIT's missing semester of CS. Yeah, there's there's, there's this workshop series that uh, we, we got inspiration from, yeah. So a bit about myself, uh, you can see like my GitHub uh, and like uh, I am a year four computer science undergrad. So I'm actually gonna grad this sem. Yeah, and uh, I enjoy like uh, hacking and building systems. Apart from that, I also like enjoy board games and sci-fi books. Yeah, you can always shoot me a telegram or whatever if you wanna chat. Yeah. Okay, so today this the objective is quite simple. Uh, we're just gonna learn like how to hack on a Unix-like environment. So how to use like the shell, how to create scripts to automate certain things, and this is gonna be like uh, we're gonna cover basic things. So it's not gonna be like very complex or hard to follow. So Unix-like environment, so either one of these, like Linux, Mac OS, okay, I don't know if people are using BSD, but if you are doing good for you, um, and then like Unix, like other OSs, WSL, um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so any of these environment will work, uh, make sure that you have a terminal um, ready for that, yeah. So just a bit of background on like Unix, it's actually first developed in like the 1970s, and it's actually meant uh, for like it is a family of multitasking, multi-user, multi-user OSs, and it actually popularizes um, the use of the interactive command line. Oh yeah, I think Alvin sent a link in the chat. Yeah, yeah, actually I think that's the course. Yeah, you can take a look at that. So it's quite it's quite informative as well. Okay, so um, the Unix philosophy is that uh, you know you want to write programs that do one thing and do it well. So uh, that makes it easy to reason about and also like modular. And then you also want to write programs to work together, right? So when you then you have things like uh, composing different programs, right? So the different, different functionality, you can use them. Uh, you can mix and match them to produce more, I guess, um, complex fu functionality just from simple building blocks. 
And then you also want to uh, write programs to handle text streams. So shell is actually like shells uh, like bash um, is like they are more friendly towards like handling text streams. And the reason for that is like, you know, it's a universal interface. Yeah. Okay, so uh, a bit more on like the shell for those who are new to it. So it's like a textual interface. So you can see on my right side, like this text, right? You can type stuff, okay. You can print things. Hello, okay, print hello. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a textual interface. And like you can, uh, it provides a, okay, it provides an interactive programming language uh, that you can use to like write scripts to automate things. So there's many actually shells you can use from, like many shells you can use, right? So there's sh and bash. Uh, usually most distros will ship with like bash. Uh, yeah, but they should definitely have sh. Um, and then uh, shells which are matching languages. So for example, C shell is like, the syntax is very similar to C. Um, and then there's other shells which like have more, I guess, goodies. So like fish, uh, zsh, that, has like auto completion, things like that. Uh, personally, I use a lot of bash, but I also use a bit of Z shell for like auto completion stuff. But yeah, <laughs> I don't really configure too much. Um, yeah, so for this workshop, actually, we'll focus more on like SH and uh, bash, because it's uh, like ubiquitous, right? Like most uh, systems should have it. So yeah. So when you open your terminal, this is what you should see. Uh, maybe I'll give some time for people to like just set up your system if you want to open your terminal or whatever. So I guess just well, a few I'm seconds will do. I'll right, we'll just wait for a while. Let me see if the chat has any questions. Okay, okay. no questions so far. Okay, yeah, so let's continue. Um, yeah, so the what the shell does is that it lets you run like various programs, uh, various commands to do certain, to do various things. So you can do things like, uh, for example, you can, you can do like ping. You can like echo text. Yeah, basically various commands, right? So some common commands that uh, I think are quite useful would be man. So man is to get like the manual pages of some command. So for example, we can do like man ping, right? To see what it does. So usually uh, this would give like a long form of like documentation with like very in-depth explanation on each option, right? And you can like search for various options. For example, you want to see what dash D does, right? So you press slash dash D and then you can like find the option. You might want to add a space in front, like because that would match like the spaces before, then that's a convenient way to like go through it. Yeah. So that's man. Uh, you can use it to see like the menu pages of a command, and then cd is to change directory. So let's just make a directory, and then we can like change to it. So now notice that uh, previously we were just like in project slash hacker tools. Now we are in the directory one, right? One one directory lower. And uh, ls is to uh, ls is to list the current directories. So ls, you see that okay, I have a bunch of stuff inside here. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, let's make a directory again. Okay, so if you list, you have directories one and two. Uh, and then um, RM to remove files in directory. So you can like uh, remove files. So let's create a file, uh, file one. Okay, so like you type ls again, you will see the file there, right? And so now we want to uh, remove that file, right? Just RM file one. Right. So that's RM. Uh, you can also remove folders actually, but uh, you can't just do this, right? Uh, you might have to do a recursive uh, uh, removing for it. Yeah, so just if you want to remove folders, either do rmdir the folder name, 
R. So now we are left with one more directory, right? Two. Or you can type rm space dash r two. So note that this actually recursively deletes everything in the directory. So like, yeah, you might want to uh, confirm first before you like delete the whole directory itself. Yeah. Okay, and then next thing is that we have uh, cp, that's like copy a file, right? Uh, so let's make another, let's make the file again, file one. Um, and so we have a file one here, right? And then let's say we want to copy this file into, uh, we want to make a copy of this file, right? We can just like copy the file to another one, right? So you can see here now we have two files, right? File one and a copy of file one, not name file two. Yeah. Everyone following along so far? Any questions? Okay. Yeah, I'll cover PWD soon. Yeah. So, the other thing we can do is also uh, MV. That is also like sometimes used to, um, that's also sometimes used to like move files or like rename files. Sorry, that's also sometimes used to rename files. Um, yeah, so we can like move a direct, move a file, for example, uh, into another directory. So let's move file one into der one, right? So you can see that now der one has file one inside. And you also, you also can use it to like rename files. So like move file one to file, uh, file three. Oops, sorry, there's no file. Of oh, move file two, okay. Move file two to file three. Yeah. So yeah, you've renamed file two to file three. And the last thing to cover is like PWD. So this just like shows like what's, what directory you're in. Any questions? Yes, uh, not, not, uh, I mean, yeah, text touch is just to create a file. So like the file is like empty when you, when you create it. So let me, let me just show you like, okay, let's say, uh, we, we just created an empty file, right? Just now we touch, uh, file two and we name it to file three. So if you open up file three, it's just empty, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we continue on. So any other questions? Any other questions from anyone here? Okay. Okay. Mm, uh, just type in the name, like there's no, it's, 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 not, it's not like specific to the format. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a question from the audience was like, can you use MV for every kind of file? Yes, you can. Like as long as you have the right permissions to um, move that file. Yeah, like if you have permissions for that file, then yeah, you can do it. Um, otherwise, no. Yeah, but okay. Continuing on. Um, so we have bash uh, shortcuts as well. So like, uh, Control A will jump to the start of the line, right? So suppose you like type something very long, right? You want to jump to the start of it. Just Control A. Uh, Control E will jump to the end of it. Uh. Then like uh alt B will uh remove sorry we'll move back one word. Alt F will move forward. So like you can see, you can try it out uh, on your own. And then um control K here will actually delete from the cursor to the end of the line. So you can see that you delete everything. And we can also undo. So like uh control underscore that does undo. And uh, the other thing that we might want to do is also like deleting the entire uh, line that we've typed. So control U and also uh, control W. Yeah. So you can look at the documentation for read line. Uh, you can see uh, the main page for read line. You can just like Google this uh, main read line. Uh, or if you have it on your system, if you have a main page on your system, yeah, you can just read it. Uh, that actually covers like all of the different like shortcuts you can use. I think if you scroll down, where is that? Yeah, you can see that like, see control D, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, oops, okay. Uh, so continuing on, um, you have other things like uh, control C. So let's just do ping again. Right. 
Okay, so like this is running and you want to stop it, right? Just type control C, right? And that would stop um, the program from running. And we can also uh, suspend it. So it's running, we want to suspend it. So this like uh, pauses it and then like, let's say we want to continue, right? We can just type FG, then you'll continue. Yeah. And so the other thing is that now we have a lot of like output on our terminal. So actually you want to clear all of it, right? So you can type like the clear command, right? Or like a shortcut is to just like type, to press control L, right? So that just clears everything. And we can also pause the output to the screen. So control S, the program continues to run, but now the out output is like stopped, right? So you don't see any output. And you can press con control Q to allow the output again. Okay, so that's just like the basic commands you can use on your terminal, which I think are quite useful. And um, yeah, now we'll move on to like writing scripts themselves, right? So um, something to know that like, okay, so, so for scripts, right? You can actually write them like directly in the prompt itself, okay? Uh, or you can actually write it into a file uh, so that like you can reuse it next time. Uh, so for me, like I have like various scripts to automate certain things in my uh in my system. For example, if I want to reboot my system, I have some scripts for that. Um or I have some scripts uh like for yeah, basically doing a bunch of like different automation stuff. Um yeah. So uh now I think it's time to open like the editor. So let's just open like uh let's just create uh Here. Yeah. So just open an editor and like create a file. You can call it example script or you can call it something else. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, I'll give everyone some time to like just set it up. Okay. Okay, yeah. So like uh you can follow along and just like type this into uh your script file. So um first you add this line here. Okay, uh, the, we are using we are using the shell rather than bash shell. Okay. So uh type in the that header and then um echo something, right? And then in the shell itself, right? Uh let's make this file executable so you can see that the file is here, right? So let's make this file executable, right? And then we can run it. So what is going on here, right? Um, so let's explain it line by line. So the first line here, these two characters here actually is known as like a shebang. So what it does is that, you know, everything after that is like uh, the interpreter that we are using, right? So in this case is sh. Um, you can also use uh, bash. So, uh, yeah, so what I'm doing here is that I'm using uh, uh, this uh, executable called env to source for my uh, bash interpreter and to use it. So I've saved this file and now that I'm going back to my terminal, I can run it again and it should work just fine yeah so you can use like different shells like depending on your uh needs i guess yeah oh yeah something you'll notice that you can also use like other, other interpreters like uh python um for like writing python scripts right yeah you can try this on your own yeah so um most like command line utilities right they actually they actually support like uh options so like earlier, I think I, I used like rm-r, right? So actually dash r is like an option. So if you see like the help for it, rm accepts like a bunch of options first, followed by a bunch of like positional arguments. 
And so that's like the common, like I guess, convention for most uh, most commands, right? Like they will assign a bunch of options first, and then they will take in some arguments. Yeah. So uh, to note is that you also can like combine uh, the flags. So uh, the example is shown here, like rm dash r space dash f is the same as rm dash r f. Yeah. And so the other thing to demonstrate is also like. Uh, when, like, for example, you if you want to terminate uh, providing options, right? So, like, uh, let's let's give a concrete scenario on like why why you would want to do that. So, suppose that uh, we want to create a file. It is a bit of a contrived example, but suppose we want to create a file called dash dash help, right? So earlier on, I used the command touch. So you can see, like, I if I do touch dash dash help. Obviously, it won't create the file, right? It will just like dump the whole help pro help prompt for touch, All right? So how do I show that help is actually like the file name, right? How do I pass it in as an argument rather than an option, right? So the way I could do that is to add in dash dash, right? So this is actually like a delimiter to show like okay, the options are done. Like I'm done touching my options. Uh, everything after that is like my uh, arguments, right? So now if you list, you would see that. Um, help is there, right? So of course, again, if we do this, it won't like remove the file. So again, we need that delimiter there, and now help should be gone. Yeah. So um, some common flags that you can use are like uh, dash a. So like this will list all files. So for example, list. Uh, let's create a file with a prefix like dot dot hello. Right, so if you type this, normally you won't show that uh file, right? Because like, uh, in Linux, uh, the convention is that you know things with dots are considered like hidden files, so you won't actually be able to like see it. So if you type ls dash a, right, actually you list everything, including the dot hello. Yeah. Oh, immediately as a directory. Oops. Okay. Yeah. So uh, dash dash a and dash f is like to force something. Uh, so like sometimes, uh, for example, like need force pushing, right? Like if, um, the commits are mismatched, but like you don't really want to perform a merge, you did a rebase locally or, or something like that, right? Uh, you would use dash F to force push your commit, or if you want to force, uh, remove a file, um, yeah, you would do like dash F, right? And then dash, dash H usually, uh, displays help, but sometimes you might need to type it out in long form. I think, for example, rm dash h, yeah, it's the invalid option, so you might need to type it on long form, right? And then there's dash v, so that's like uh, providing a verbose output. Sometimes you might it might be useful, like if you want to debug a certain uh, program, right? You want more verbose uh, output to get more information on like how to debug, right? And then finally, dash v is to like provide the version of the command. So, yeah. Commands are usually like some exec like some executable, right? So like uh they also have versioning, like because like there's different uh versions of the command, like they have more features or something like that. So you might want to see sometimes like oh you type a command and then you like pass in certain arguments, but it doesn't work, or like you pass in certain options, but they say the option doesn't exist. Maybe your version is out of sync, right? So yeah. Okay, so something to know, so like for those coming from Windows, um, I think there probably is quite a number of us coming from Windows, um, but yeah, like uh, Unix has a different directory structure from Windows. Uh, there is no concept of like drives. I know Windows has like C drive, D drive, that kind of thing, but uh, they, yeah, there isn't like a concept of that. Uh, everything is just like files or directory. So like the root directory is just slash, right? And uh, Note that we also use like forward slash instead of backslash. Uh, and like, yeah, you can read more with, with this link here. Oops. Okay. Yeah. So important directories that you want to take note of would be like, okay, so these directories listed here are like the uh, executable directories. So yeah, various directories, uh, various like uh, execu executables might be stored here, like things local to the user or like system-wide binaries. Um, uh, yeah. And then slash home is like your user home directory. So like in your slash home directory, you would have 
uh, like documents or uh, yeah, like different programs also might store things there. Um, like yeah, and then on Mac OS is different. I think it's like slash users. That's your home directory that then branches off into different like uh each of the users, right? And then you have slash var slash log. That's for your log files. Uh, also quite important, I guess, if you are just if you want to like see what's going on with your programs. Slash TMP is like your temporary file. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I'll just take a pause here. Any questions so far? How does MV handle symbolic links? I don't know. I haven't used MV. <laughs> I feel like I should know this, but I, I haven't used MV for symbolic links. In fact, I rarely use symbolic links. Yeah. But okay, maybe if someone knows, they can say. I feel like I should know this, but I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> it probably just moves them. Okay. Yes. Okay, so uh yeah, yeah. does anybody have questions like from here? Sorry, I keep talking to the Zoom. Like not anybody has questions here. <laughs> no? Everyone's following okay? Yeah, okay. If if like you have questions, you can just like raise your hand or whatever. Yeah. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, so um, yeah, the next thing that you can try is uh, uh so the next thing that we'll cover is uh, shell syntax, right? So uh, earlier on, we used a bunch of commands and like uh, I briefly mentioned, you know, like they would follow a certain format, like they'll take in options followed by some parameters, right? So yeah, that's actually like the format, right? Command followed by some options and some arguments, right? So you can like echo, hello, right? Yeah. And um, you also can use variables. So that's also quite helpful. Like for example, like to store text. So let's just use the example shown here in the slide. So like echo location, that's without any variables, right? No, so now let's have a name variable here. So you, if you echo name, right? It should actually show Noel now, right? You'll substitute that uh var variable with like what it was assigned to. Yeah. So there's also a bunch of like special. So the first is like dollar question mark. So that's like to get the exit code of the previous command. So if it's zero, so I think let's we can just like show it here. So you can see like the previous command was like echo name, right? So like uh, it will show like the exit code and see, uh, you know, if it, if it actually failed, right, it wouldn't, it wouldn't show zero. It would show like some number from, I think one to two, five, five or something like that, that like denotes what is the actual error. So you can actually look up like, uh, exit codes, uh, to see like what each error, which, what each ex error code means or exit code means. Yeah. And then, uh, one to nine are actually arguments to a script. So, um, we can, I'll, I'll just demonstrate that, uh, yeah, the next slide has an example. So I'll demonstrate it in the next slide. And then dollar pound would be like the number of arguments. Dollar dollar would be PID of current shell. Yeah. So let's just, uh, show this example here. So variable example. Okay. And okay, I want to prefix it with. Echo all of the, all of it. Okay, so echo one, echo two, and echo um. Okay, okay. So yeah, uh, we shall do that. And um, okay. So we continue on, and let's make this uh, let's make this script executable, and we can run it. So what is going on here, right? We run it with no, right? So what's going on here? Well, we, we didn't pass in any arguments, right? So dollar zero uh, refers again to the name of the script itself, right? And so of course we still have that. You can see uh, echo in the first line. And then uh, the second uh, second and third line, uh, of course we didn't pass in any arguments to the script, right? So they print nothing. And then finally, dollar pound also shows like, okay, we didn't pass in any arguments. So this is like zero. So if like, 
right? If you type in like one, two, right? That's when you actually print out the argument. So the first argument, second argument, and number of arguments is two. Yeah. Okay, so now moving on to the next uh, uh, to the next thing. So we have loop as well. So this is helpful. Like, uh, yeah, if you want to if you want to run a loop to do certain things. So like, um, echo hello. Okay, so you can type it in line by line, right? Okay, yeah, so you can see here what, okay, so what, what is happening here, right? So this dollar followed by like parentheses, uh, sig one five, right? This is actually different from variable substitution. What this means is like, I will execute the command inside first, and I will substitute the output inside here, right? So it becomes like four I in one, two, three, four, five, do echo, hello, done, right? So you can see like the output is the same. So Basically, like for each, uh, for each I, like just do an echo hello. Okay. So those are for loops. And oh yeah, so so yeah, this is the explanation. Yeah. So the syntax is as follows: for x, so this is like the binding, like some variable x, uh, in some list, um, and then you would do some commands inside the body, and then followed by done to show that this, uh, yeah, you're done with the loop basically. Yeah. So to break it down, uh, sem the semicolon here is actually to uh, terminate a command. So it's equivalent to like a new line, right? And then um, this list here is split up like uh, by white space, right? And so each, uh, I guess each character, so like one, two, three, four, five here, right? Is assigned to the variable. So it's assigned to I. Yeah. And then like you run body with that in scope. Yeah. So I think you also can do like uh where's that echo i. Yeah. So you can see here that the i is in scope, right? Like in the body part. So you because you you've bound uh one, two, three, four, five to i. So now for each i you would echo it. Yeah. So the syntax is different, like I think if you are using C or like other languages it might be a bit different. Um yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, everything in the shell script is a command. So like, this is a command, this is a command, this is a command. And, um, here, what this is doing, yeah, it's just to echo hello. And yeah, so that was the example that we went through. Okay. So the next thing that we'll cover now that we're done with loops would be conditionals. So, uh, for conditionals, uh, we will use something known as test, right? So this is quite helpful. Um, the syntax of a conditional is as follows, right? So you would like have a if followed by a, like, of your condition, um, whatever you want to evaluate, followed by the body. So you run this like um, if the statement, like uh, if the condition evaluates to exit code zero, right? Otherwise, um, yeah, otherwise you won't run it. Yeah. So you can also like add in an else statement here as well. So like uh, you can see um, if this is true, you will echo true. If not, you echo false, right? So we can run this command just to see how it works, right? Dash dash d slash bin, then echo true, else echo false, finish the if conditional. Yeah. So what is a uh, test, right? So we should look up uh, the man for it. And if you can search for dash d option, it basically searches to see if like, uh, the file exists and it's a directory. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the other thing that you can do is also like, uh, to make it so the the test the writing test doesn't really show where the conditional ends, right? So you might want to use a uh, square braces instead. So there's an alternate like synthetic sugar, I guess. So like, uh, you can do uh, dash d slash bin instead. Uh, yeah. And then, then echo true, else echo false. So it does the same thing as well. Yeah. So instead of using tabs, I use the square braces. And that kind of shows where like my conditional starts and ends. Yeah. 
So, okay, let's just apply like what we've learned so far, like from the while loops as well as the conditionals. Yeah. So we'll write a simple script that, you know, prints only directories in our current folder. So before we begin, let's create a bunch of directories. Okay. So you can see here that we have a bunch of different directories, right? And let's create like a script that prints uh, the directories and not the files. Okay. So for each, is there, sorry, uh, yeah, any, any question actually? Question. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, something you know is, as well, like the spaces, I think it might, it might, like if you have some sort of uh, issue with like, okay, so for example, you type this, right? You will see that it actually complains. Oops. True, else, echo, false. Okay, let's just finish the if statement. Yeah, you will complain because like you didn't include like spaces. So like you need to have a space um, before it, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, yeah, continuing on. So yeah, let's 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 continue writing the script. So here we run the list command, expand the output uh inside here. And then what we do is that um now if that file uh if that if that directory if that exists and it's a directory, right? Then what do we do? We echo the followed by the directory name, and then we are done. Right, yeah. So we can try to run this script now. So chmod, what's the script name again? Ah, okay, dir.sh. So if you run it, yeah, you can see that it should list out all of the directories. Right. But there's actually an issue here. So maybe I'll pause around to like let people like guess at it, or if you want to try this out and just like see how this would break or behave in a undesirable way, I guess. Yeah. Or unexpected way. Yeah. So take some time to just like try it out. See if you can break anything. By changing the like directory names maybe. Yeah. Also let me know in chat if you have any questions so far. Everything okay? <laughs> You have any questions? No. All right, I'll continue. So, okay, yeah. So the, the case that we, I was like talking about is actually, what if like there's a space uh, between it, right? So actually earlier on, remember that we mentioned uh, what happens like, uh, like when, when we are substituting things in, right? So in this case, like, okay, now suppose that uh, there is a space inside, right? Actually, this will expand to for F in my documents, right? So this is actually not what we what we want, right? Because like, uh, yeah. Because like, it will become like this, right? So I think the F will only bind, will, will bind to like, my then documents, right? So we want it to bind together, right? Yeah. So if we create a file called that, my documents, right? And then we run this. Yeah. You can see that it breaks. Yeah. So how how do you fix this issue right so bash actually splits like arguments by white space and like uh if like dash f itself contains white space the test will error right so that's why you see like it doesn't return it doesn't return an error code uh zero and then your conditional breaks right and so you don't actually see my documents being printed so to to like support that right what you can do is actually provide a quotation right So with this, oops, 
Uh, sorry, I need to go back to my script. <coughs> Okay. Oops, I think I broke your script. Okay, wait. <sighs> SO error. F is. Okay, I put a script. Okay. Okay, but there's, there's some way to fix it. I'm not I'm not very sure. Okay. Um but yeah, you should be able to fix it if you use like quote to handle the spaces. Um yeah. Okay, I'll provide that in an update like after the workshop where I where I figure it out. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, continuing on. Yeah, so uh, the other thing is that uh, you can also use like block patterns. So like you can list the star, right? For instance, sorry, uh, you can RM, RM the star, right? For instance, uh, okay, let's remove. Okay, let's try that again. So yeah, you can use block patterns. So now you can see like, oh yeah. So so they were already removed, right? So all of the pet, all of the directories with star uh, that matches like this this block pattern here with the star were removed. Yeah. There were some errors like cause like the directory was empty, and like the other thing that we tried to remove wasn't a directory. So yeah, but the rest of the files were successfully removed. Um, yeah. So. You can also so instead of using ls right like previously we use um so previously we use this right but actually we can also do like star yeah so if you if you run it again dot slash there dot sh uh oh sorry this ls dot sh ch mod plus x i start with ch okay my binary operator expected yeah but you can see that uh you can use star instead to substitute the ls command and that would actually like list out all of the current um what you call it the current files inside them yeah so uh also be sure to yeah, but you still need to use like the 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 core on it So you also can like just now I, I give a demonstration that you can also like match on like uh characters plus a star, right? So that matches on like the plus like everything that has the inside the name. Yeah. So yeah. So for example, like uh we can make a bunch of text files as well. Uh Right, and okay, let's quote this. And let's uh, list all the text files, right? Okay, in this case, we don't want to just check if it's a directory, right? We just want to echo it. So we can try that. Yeah, you can see that it prints out all of the text files according to the block pattern that we use. Yeah. So there's other more like complex, like I guess, block patterns that you can use. Okay, so uh, any questions so far? Like maybe I was running the wrong script actually. Wait, let me let me let me see if I. Hmm. 
if dash d f echo f right else oh no no else <coughs> Okay. Yeah, okay, nice. I made it work. Oh. My documents. Yeah, okay, it works now. Yeah, sorry, I was quoting the wrong thing just now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, continuing on. Um so the other the other thing that we can can use. So early on, we remember that we mentioned like uh using quotations, right? Yeah. So like what if like the foo, foo is empty here, right? So what's gonna happen? So let's try that. So if foo equals to bar, then so what's going on here? Why why does dash tell us this error? Right. So what's actually happened is that because foo is undefined, right? So this just substitutes like for white space. So it's just like basically, basically you are like typing this. Right. And then, uh, okay, I guess we can fill out the rest of the stuff as well. Then echo, hello. Yeah, so you can see here, like, you know, you see the same error. And basically that's what happens, right? Like full just like becomes empty. So like one hack is to like add a character in front, right? So that if this gets removed, right, it will be like x equals to x bar, right? But that's like quite hacky, right? So uh, Bash actually has like this convenience, like you can actually do this, like uh, o equals bar, right? And then then echo hello. Yeah, so you can see here that uh, instead of erroring out, now foo is uh, like empty, right? So like uh, you would be able to like just show that it's uh, uh, erroring, right? And then uh, fill, the, fill the conditional, then yeah. So of course, I mean like if we define, if we define foo, then this should just work fine. Yeah, so it prints hello. Yeah, okay, so there's other like conveniences. So you, you might not be able to get all of these like inside the shell itself, SH itself, right? But you can use this in bash. And um, there's other things like NN or that kind of thing uh, that are other like convenience that uh, syntax that bash provides. Yeah. So, okay, we've covered quite a lot of material so far. Um, something to take note of is that, uh, yeah, you can see like, early on when I was writing my script, right? Like this script, for instance, right? I quoted like the wrong thing this, which is why it failed, because like this took it in as exact, like one whole, one whole chunk itself, right? And then it's actually not a, the whole, like, there one, there two, there three, it's actually not like a directory name, right? That's why it doesn't get printed out. Yeah. There's like other things that uh, can get caught, like, uh, yeah, they can get caught by shell check. For example, I think, okay, let's just, let's just copy and paste this cube inside shell check itself. So you can go to shellcheck.net, right? And you can like copy and paste your scripts inside. And you can see like, you know, uh, shellcheck actually, okay, I need to zoom in a bit more so that people can see. You can see like shellcheck like tells you, okay, like this is actually bad practice. So like if you use drops instead, yeah. So like shell check actually just help you to check a lot of different things. Like, yeah, so like it's quite common to run it in CI or like just have it uh, as an extension to your editor. Yeah. Okay, so next, uh, composability, right? So uh, here we're actually gonna demonstrate like how you can chain like different programs together instead of like having one program that is like very complicated and does everything, right? So like, as, as we covered at the start, right? This is the Unix philosophy. Yeah. 
So let's try out like this command here. So actually you can see that it's like uh it, it comprises of two two parts, right? Uh DMESG as well as tail, right? So these are actually separate commands, right? And what we are doing here is actually we are um doing something known as like piping. So why why is like piping, right? So it's like we want to run both commands and then we want to send command from DMESG to tail, right? So that's what we are doing. Send the output from DMESG to tail. Right. So you can see like if we run it normally, right? That's like, okay, stop. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff, right? So we want to like just take maybe the last, the latest few updates, right? So uh we pipe that to tail. So what you can see that what tail does is that you know it outputs just like the last part of the files, right? So usually that's like the most recent like up updates, right? So you that's that's like quite helpful instead of like seeing the whole file, right? There's a lot of noise. Yeah, so you can uh like chain this even longer. Like so, what this does is that okay, there's there's three parts, right? It looks very complicated, but it's actually just three parts. So this basically like just uh prints like the system log, and then this next section, what it does is that it filters through the output, right? Uh, filters for set ten, uh, which lo looks for oh, sorry, today is not set ten anymore. Today is August thirty. This is outdated, but yeah, you can grab for today's logs and then um probably the tail again to get like the, the latest view from today. Yeah, so you can see like you can change this with various, various functionality, right? So just get all the logs first, then another, another command does like filtering, and then the last command like just takes the latest view, right? So you can have like different functionality and like compose them together. So the other thing that's uh, useful to take note of is that um, programs have like three streams. So you have standard in, standard out, and standard error. So standard error is usually like where, uh, I guess the convention is like where you would pipe like error output to, um, and then standard out is just like, uh, yeah, you just print, generally a program will just print to here like for like info logs, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, and then standard in is like where your program actually reads uh, input from. So I think this is like usually just from the, by default, it's like from your keyboard. Yeah, by default, it's from your keyboard. And then uh, standard error and standard out is like attached to your terminal. So it will output to your terminal itself. Yeah. So you can actually like change these things. These are like, it's, it's not it's not fixed, right? So these are the, the defaults, but so there's a few different ways you can, you can change it. So like, uh, okay. For example, okay, uh, A uh, pipe B, right? So that actually makes the, um, the standard out of A uh, pipe to the standard in of B. We have a question in the chat. <clears throat> all, uh, all programs. Uh, okay, I'm not sure. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is is I mean, TUI, TUI suggests that it's a U. I mean, it's just. Programs, yeah, it's just just programs in general, right? Uh, sorry, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Um, sorry, there was a question in the chat, but yeah, okay, yeah, continuing on. Um, so, uh, yeah, A takes the output of uh, uh, sorry, pipe makes the output standard out of the first uh command and pipes it into the, the same command. So this uh was gen generated earlier, uh, demonstrated earlier. So for example, we can do this, right? And we can pipe it, let's say you want to grab all the text files, right? So grab txt, right? So that's like the pipe command. And then um, uh, this command, basically what it does is that the standard out of A now goes into the file full. So we can again show that. So uh, let's cat, okay, let's just cat some script. So like cat, so what cat does is that it just like prints the contents of the file um and uh, uh to the screen right and now let's let's redirect that uh so the output normally goes to the terminal right as earlier mentioned but now we can like redirect that to some file so it's just quite full right so actually now if you cat full right you can see that it contains the contents of ls.sh yeah oh yeah like Firefox through the terminal. Um, I mean, this is, you, <laughs> you have to attach, you have to attach to the standard in and standard out of, 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 uh, 
Firefox. I don't know if it's... Does it spawn by default? I'm not sure like Firefox about Firefox. Yeah, I haven't tried that before. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, but basically I think you need to have like the, 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 the handle to like the uh, standard in of Firefox if you want to pipe to it. Yeah, I'm not really quite sure how to do that, but because I haven't done it before, but yeah, maybe there's some way. Um, okay, uh, anyway, so continuing on. Uh, so we demonstrated uh, redirecting the output from uh, some command. And oh, so by default, right, this actually means uh, standard out, right? But you, if you type a tool followed by like this, it's actually meaning standard error instead. So you can redirect standard error as well, right? So something you can do also is like, say, uh, some downstream command, right? Only accepts like, uh, oh, yeah, some, so, so, so for example, let's say you want to pass, uh, standard error and standard out to some downstream command. What you can do is you can redirect uh standard error to standard out so that would um basically just yeah merge everything into standard out and then you can pipe that into your downstream command yeah so that's like some example of like you redirecting standard error and then uh the other thing you can do is also you can uh read standard in instead of from from like your keyboard itself right you can also read standard in from some file instead yeah so that's done by this uh is there any example i can think of okay okay i guess i can do echo abc right so like oh there's nothing in the text file sorry oh it stops okay i'm not sure why this is not okay but yeah, okay, you can, yeah, so standard in from, uh, the standard in of A is also, oh, sorry, echo doesn't work, doesn't read from standard in, I think, if I'm not wrong. I think that's why, wait. Yeah, it doesn't read from standard in. It takes it as an argument in states, which is why it doesn't, you know, but, yeah, okay. I think we can, we can use, uh, we can use cat. Okay, so let's create some file called f, right? And then here we talk like one.txt, right? So, okay. oh, I forgot to save it. Yeah, so you can see here, uh, cat reads the file name from f instead. Yeah. So f here contains the string one dot uh, txt, right? And that gets redirected to the uh, standard in of cat. And so yeah, it prints like one dot txt. And this, I think, is specific to, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's available inside shell itself, but yeah, uh, A followed by uh, three arrows and some text. Um, yeah, uh, standard in of A is read from what comes after this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think this is specific to bash if I'm not wrong. Um, and then the other thing you might want to do is also, okay, suppose like, you want to print something to screen, but you also want to like persist it, right? To like store it in some. So as mentioned, like uh, T, what it does is that it reads from standard input and it writes to both standard output as well as some files, right? So uh, again, we do cat list.sh, we pipe it to T, right? Uh, and then, so let's just call the file foo, right? Uh, or let's call it bar. I think the full file is taken. So you can see here it prints to standard output, right? But at the same time, if you open up the bar file, right, you will also have, um, uh, what do you call it? You also have the uh, upstream output, which is from cat ls.sh, right? Uh, being written to bar as well. Yeah. So you can try that out. Any questions so far about stream redirection? Okay. Yeah. 
so um so like i guess just now i just give like what each does but uh it shows we also should like talk about why it's useful so what you can do actually like as i earlier showed right like you can use um uh you can manipulate the output so ls output itself is quite noisy right so let's say if you want to just filter for the text files so earlier on as i demonstrated like you can just do uh, you can pipe it to some downstream command so this like manipulates the output right so that's actually very powerful like you can use it to filter for just like the things that you want and like i'll be actually covering this in the later workshop uh next week so this is like for data wrangling yeah so it's like you will basically do like sorry excuse me Oops. okay you will basically um uh be able to wrangle like output data from uh, various upstream programs yeah uh okay yeah so other other things you can do other like things you can do would be uh a semicolon b and, uh, with parentheses what that does is like you will basically run um a then followed by b and then like you merge their like output and then you will pipe it to uh, uh tech right so uh let's give some let's give an example right um Right, so sorry. Yeah. So you see that this command gets the uh, the output from this command gets merged and gets piped to protect. Yeah. So uh, the other thing you can do is also like uh do process substitution. So like uh you would run a generate a temporary file name for its uh, output. And then actually what you do is then pass the file name to B. So this is like different um, from like taking the contents of A. So earlier on we had like this, right? So it might be a bit confusing. So I'll show you guys again. So like earlier on we had this, right? So this actually reads a uh, standard name of A from some file foo, right? In this case, what we are passing is like the file name itself rather than like, yeah, the contents of A, right? So, okay, let's run through the command again. So you can see here that these are the files that uh the, the, the temporary file names that were created and like uh, that's what is being echoed out yeah. so these are some other commands that you can uh try out on your own as well like uh i think this uh, this shows like the difference between like the first 20 lines of the last bullet and like the one before that yeah yeah so um the other thing that you might want to do is to like uh run some things like in the background right so i think this was more important like i think like last like last time because like uh i think you only have one terminal window but nowadays you can have like multiple like virtual terminals so it it doesn't matter as much like but if let's say let's say yeah you're just running like you just want to run one program right and you don't want to spawn like whole new like terminal for that right you can use like this to run it in the background right so uh something uh you, you if you do this right the command actually is still run like uh it's, it's still attached to your uh what you call it to your to your, to your standard of your current uh terminal so like okay let's let's say we do this right you can see that it's still like prints it it is running in the background actually but you can see that she still uh still like prints to the standard of the terminal even though it's running out running in the background right uh okay yeah so again we use fg to bring it to the foreground and then we just like terminate it yeah yeah so uh that's as mentioned and uh yeah you can you can use it to run like two things two programs at the same time so like past that i think it might be more useful to like just put a spawn like a, a, another terminal for it and can you use that to manage it um, but if you're just like running two programs, I think you can just use this to run in the background and yeah. So uh, other things that are quite useful would be like, uh, so. Uh, 
uh, would be like jobs to see like so currently now there's nothing running in the background so you don't see anything um, but uh, oops no. okay wait we spawn a new terminal Yeah, so okay, I redirected the output there. So you can, if you type jobs, right, you can see that currently, like, uh, this is running the background, right? So you can use that to like see all running all jobs running in the background, and then you can use FG to bring it back, right? So nothing is being uh, shown currently on screen because I'm I'm redirecting the output to the file ABC. Okay, yeah, uh, and. Yeah, so uh, there's other things you can do. Uh, instead of um, having to pass in like N, you can press Control Z uh, to suspend the program. I think earlier on I also ran through it, like you can press Control Z to like uh, suspend it after you've started running it. Um, and yeah, if you type BG, so when you suspend it, actually it doesn't run, but if you type BG, you will actually continue the, to, to run the program in the background. So other things that are useful would be like PS. So PS like just shows like the current processors which are running. Uh, PS dash A shows like all of the processors. Um, P grab you can use it to search for a certain program. Like for me sometimes like if my Microsoft Teams is like running, and I uh yeah, and and I want to see like okay like is it is it running or whatever I just like P grab Teams right, um, yeah. And then Q is you can queue by like the PID itself, but usually I use PQ instead because it allows me to like uh, search and then queue, right? So PQ, you actually have to pass in the P, the process ID itself. So there's like, a, yeah. So this is like actually like the process ID. So, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So what it does under the hood, I guess, to provide a bit more like details is like, what it does is that it sends a signal to some process and uh, it gives, like it sends a queue signal to, 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 to like the process. And then like there's various degrees in which you can like, uh, various options in which you can pass in. Like uh, there's a way to like tell the program to just uh, exit right now. So there's dash nine, right? Yeah, dash queue. And then there's like, a uh, way to like tell the program, okay, let's. I want I want you to exit, but I want you to like do uh, allow you to do cleanup and so on. Yeah. So. Yeah. So to like, if if you guys want to like have uh to read up more, like you can also look at uh bash guide, and um. So these are the two links. I think I can just open up and just show you all. Well, so this and this right. yeah so they have like a lot of different like uh sections that you can use to read up more on it yeah uh this one i think is a bit more <laughs> uh in detail like but uh you can use this for like a trdr yeah okay uh and yeah so there's a bunch of exercises that you can try i guess on your own time <laughs> um so like okay i can just show you show you what this does so uh normally like when you when you pipe in right you will notice that things like go in like so for example you type ls right so when you pipe ls uh into grab txt right you can see like things going one one by one right but let's say if you want to pass them all like uh together as like arguments to some to some uh command right so that's when like x arc is useful so you see like okay ls dash uh yeah so you can see like this doesn't really work properly right but let's say if you want to pass them in as arguments to this right you can see like then that uh that works because now x arc what it does is that it in inlines that as 
it, it, it inlines that as arguments to the file command. Yeah. So other things you can try would be like permutations. So like, uh, and then you type ls. So you can see that it generates permutations. Oh, whoops! I think I didn't. I included a space, so that's wrong. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. Sorry. There's the mesh quotes again. But yeah, make sure you don't put a space there. But yeah. Uh. Yeah. You'll generate all the permutations that are that they are available like through this like a a a b and so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh. Then like other things would be. Yeah, oh yeah, T, T was covered earlier on, redirection is covered earlier on, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, con yeah, okay, so actually that's, oh, that's all. Okay, so yeah, that's all. Uh, please feel free to leave some feedback. Uh, and next session, we will actually be covering like data wrangling. So, like earlier on, the things that we talk about, like piping, filtering, and so on, we actually will provide like, uh, I guess, more complex, uh, operations or commands you can do uh yeah and yeah okay yeah that's all thanks for coming any questions if not like feel free please please not feel free please leave feedback um we'll really appreciate it yeah yes any questions okay.